And here I am, redoing this script because I had the audacity to think my ideas were more popular than they were. Sucks to suck, I guess. Even more so because I have lunch sitting right in front of me, but because my scheduling issues are terrible, I have it open in front of me and I'm smelling it while I'm trying to record this, so, you know, life is hell. Generic greetings and welcome to Science Insanity, a channel dedicated to bringing my love of science fiction and all its often incorrect stupidity to you, the viewer. Today, Flight Pods, the most intelligent solution to the problem of needing fighter craft to support the battle brick you call a warship. What they are, how they function, why they're a great idea, and why they are criminally underrepresented and why I underestimated their popularity. But first, shameless shill. If you enjoy the video, leave a like, subscribe, ring the bell, watch our other content, all that good stuff to help fight the algorithm gods and try to get Psy to 20k by the end of the year. Next big milestone, big ask, but miracles happen, so might as well. If you want to support us directly, check out Psy's Patreon and toss us a few shekels. If you just want to hang out with fellow Turbo Nerds, we have a Discord and a small but growing community of fellow Turbo Nerds that would love to have you. Everything linked in the video description. And with that, Let's get into it. Flight pods, external hangar bays, those supercarrier sized bricks you staple onto the sides of your ship. Originally, this video was supposed to be about how awesome they are and how often they show up in science fiction. Then I realized they, uh, uh, they aren't and they don't. So instead, let's start with what they actually are. At their most simple, flight pods are self-contained modules bolted onto the sides of a ship that allow it to carry a fighter complement without the need to dig a hole into the ship's main structure and compromise all the wonderful armor and guns that you're going to staple on there. It also allows you to remove all the hassle of the overcomplicated internal systems and mechanisms that are needed to actually make a carrier work and prevent them from interfering with the regular ship's operations. They are the most effective, at least in my opinion, execution of the battle carrier style of capital ship. To explain why, let's talk about real-life aircraft carriers and hybrids for a minute. While every major naval power has toyed around with the idea of a battleship that can launch an air wing or a carrier with capital-grade guns because they are awesome, no one ever actually seriously built any or committed to the idea outside of test ships, concepts, and remodels to existing vessels. And even then in really small numbers. For the most fundamental reason that they just don't work, ignoring the fact that, you know, maneuverability, travel, and buoyancy are all limiting factors on just making the ship bigger, dockyards as well, I guess, that needed to be big enough to actually build something like that. The main reason that they just didn't work is, well, trying to mix ship classes results in too many cooks in the kitchen. The battleship part sacrifices significant firepower and armor in order to fit a functional flight deck onto the middle or back of the ship, and the carrier part sacrifices aircraft capacity and carrier operations like refueling or rearming due to a lack of space and resources. The end result being a ship that's half battleship, half carrier, and a quarter of both. It also introduced a few big issues, like number one, carriers tend to be extremely flammable, if not outright explosive. While there have been many, many cases of battleships being set ablaze and blasted to hell and back before surviving and coming back later from the dead for repairs, pretty much every time a carrier started cosplaying a bonfire, it was doomed. And that's because all the bombs, bullets, fuel, and oil in the flight deck literally turned it into an ammo dump, and those tend to react very badly with explosives and fire, as the high Mars of fate in the Ukraine war will attest to. That's going to date this video a few years in the future. So in the real world, everyone kind of gave up on making hybrids for those reasons. But in sci-fi, well, it just make the spaceship bigger. What could go wrong? Realistically, this is just space magic as to why things don't go horribly wrong for hybrid warships, so don't think too hard about it for when we actually get into things. But when you see something like the Venator where its entire front Dorito is just a giant hangar bay, the moment proton torpedoes or turbo laser fire penetrates the armor, the entire section should go up like a fireball. There is no separation between the different hangar bays, no armoring, nothing. It's just a giant Dorito of explosive material. Like, do you see the number of starfighters and all the ammunition in there? Or let's take a look at Halo, who loves to put their giant hangar bays dead center in the ship, or space station, or asteroid base and then promptly watch as they get boarded in the most difficult to defend areas as the enemy can then access pretty much the whole ship. Argument 1 in favor of flight pods. They separate all the dangerous, explodey, potentially boarding happy bits of the ship off into their own self-contained armored sausage, which if damaged or destroyed, won't cripple the ship, only its ability to launch and recover strike craft. And in cases like Battlestar Galactica, where the titular battle stars are giant bricks of armor and guns, Losing a hangar or two won't stop it from drop-kicking the Cylons back into kitchen appliances. 
The Galactica in the show quite literally can't use one of its flight pods since it got turned into a museum, then a bar, and it never really impacts or changes the badassery of the ship. Point number two, the reverse. It's canon in Battlestar Galactica that in many cases the flight pods operate separately with backup power, gravity, and mechanical systems, mostly as an abandoned ship style escape option so that the crew can run to the shuttles, raptors, escape pods, all that stuff, and still use them if the rest of the ship is getting crumped. So if your main ship gets crippled or put out of commission, so long as the flight pods survive, they can still be used. Sort of. It just adds redundancy and minimizes the chance of chain detonations destroying a ship when something inevitably gets blasted in space combat. Like, could you imagine if the Doniger's hangar got hit by a railgun slug and it detonated the Rossi's reactor or its torpedoes or something while the main crew were trying to escape? It would have ripped the core of the ship out and exploded directly between its main engines. It's a very, very dumb place to put all of that potentially very explosive material, even if it does seem really cool. Next point as well, flight pods are combat ready. You see, the biggest issue with real carriers and ships from like Halo or Babylon 5 or something is that their hangars are mostly facing off the ship's axis of movement, i.e. the hangars for those sci-fi ships are facing left, right, up, down, whatever, while the ship is moving forwards. And like a real carrier turning hard to avoid a nuclear torpedo, this would realistically make it uh, very dangerous to try and land mid-battle if the ship is maneuvering or outright impossible. Flight pods, though, are more usable in combat. Since they tend to be in line with the ship's movement, often fighters only need to match the carrier's vector and, hey presto, just fly on in and get more danger pylons to throw at the enemy. The battle carrier only really needs to stop rotating for a few seconds to actually let this happen, or as we see with the Daedalus from Stargate, Daedalus, Daedalus, however you pronounce that, just open the hangar doors and scoop up damaged ships, shuttles, and sometimes even ejected pilots, and off you go, easy speezy. Flight pods add a whole hell of a lot of imaginary utility to the giant space battleship carrier hybrids. This video is dumb, everything I discuss is dumb, but you know what, it's cool, that's all that matters. But realistically, the biggest reason flight pods are superior to normal hangars and why they are criminally underrated and represented is because they are cool and aesthetic as fuck. Look at how iconic the silhouette of the base star, uh, not base star, oh god, Battlestar Galactic is coming back to kick me in the nuts again with all these terrible names that overlap and sound exactly the same. Battlestar. How iconic the silhouette of the Battlestar is. Look at how incredible this thing appears on screen, and how awesome the Daedalus looks with these wings coming off the sides, functional and cool. And isn't that really what having an advanced military is about, looking cool while you kill people? They are so unique visually, and so bloody cool to see, since almost no mainstream sci-fi actually does this. You need to dig into the pits of obscurity besides those two franchises in order to find this stuff. You have to go all the way into the dark realm of ugh, books to find more examples of this kind of stuff. But even more, they're super lazy and everybody loves being lazy. In general, cutting holes into a ship to add more hangers is more work than just copy pasting something you already have and then just flipping it. Adding more hangar bays to a Star Destroyer would be a hassle. It would look dumb and since it's not designed to really have any more, it would just be awkward and weird. But the Mercury from Battlestar Galactica? Oh. You need a new ship class? No problem. Just copy the flight pods, flip them upside down, and hey presto, you have a dedicated carrier version of the Mercury class Battlestar. In the fan animation, Battle at Helios Delta 6, which is amazing by the way, go watch it, they pretty much only use the Mercury model, but by duping the flight pods, make a really simple, really easy visual conversion to a new ship class. I think they also elongated the snoot, but I can't tell if they did or if it's just a perspective. So in summary, just, just do this more. Make use of the flight pods more regularly and design your ships to incorporate them since they are criminally underrated and open up a bunch of new scenes, ideas, and possibilities to the classic battle carrier style. Also, the age of small cutout holes being the hangar is over. The future is now, old man. Sci-fi has advanced beyond the constraints of real life models. Embrace the Ender's Game drone crates. Embrace Battlestar Galactica flight pods. Embrace the Separatist whatever the fuck this is where the fighters are walking around on the ship's hull. The age of pathetically small, weak hangars is over. The age of prominent, full frontal flight decks is upon us. So help me God, I will make it happen. And that is all, so says your AI overlord. And once again, before we end off, like and subscribe. I want to magic my way to that milestone and feel good about this year and myself. Please and thank you. 
And with that, we're done. But before I suddenly smash cut to a black screen, a huge thanks to the channel patrons. Your support is greatly appreciated and goes a long way behind the scenes to help me out, with a special thanks to the members of the $5 tier. David G, the original, Augie, Levin Bravo Crunchy, Terry Higgins, Pedro Munoz, David G, the other one, Silencer, Vox Apollyon, Phoenix, BT Legend, Electro Boy 11, Logan Maynard, Mickey, David Armand, Cree Dome, Robin Stop, It, Fenrir Striker, Tachi Takane, He's Deb, Pixie, Virtus, Fabric 445, Anchovy Bob, Mini Crustacean, Charles the Snap, Polly, Eric Jones, Joseph Holiday, Zombie the Zerker, David B, Sweet B, Rastro, Le Butcher, Stabby Taco, Nomquam, Brian Hall, Gene, Jing, John, Lee, and Haywood. Thank you very much for your support. I hope it'll continue in the future. And now, at the end of the video, a smash cut to a black screen.